flat here. And uh, David's lived his whole life right here in Edneyville, up on Clear Creek. His granddaddy was uh, Gay Lida, and uh, he, in the early years of apple selling, would take his apples down south and peddle them out to get started apple business. And his uncle, Gay Lida Jr., was a revenue officer and busted up many a still. And um, David's got this place here down on the creek, and he's got that barbecue cooker over there, and uh, he cooks barbecue for people that's going to have outings. Sometimes they have outings right here. Going to today. The trout season opens tomorrow, and a lot of people camping here today. And David yeah. knows more stories. So, so Barbara, uh, a lot of these people I'm talking about in these stories, me and you can too. I can't call no names, but about every one of them. But, but uh, probably years ago, everybody made liquor. They had to, to to make a living. They didn't have no other way. And uh, these particular ones made it to sell. They didn't make it just just for their self. A lot of them made it for their self, you know, but these made it to sell on, they were on Little Pisgah Mountain up there. And uh, the revenueers knew they were there. And one particular revenueer told somebody if he knew who it was to go tell them that they needed to bust that steel down that the feds was gonna come in there in two days raid them. So he went and told them, and they said that it'd take them two days to run it off because it wouldn't be ready till then. So they decided they'd take a chance on it. So here comes the feds in in two days. And one of them took off up through there. He seen them coming in the distance and up through the pasture hollering, Sook cow, sook cow, like he's looking for his cows up there and went off all the way down the middle fork toward the bat cave and got away. And the... Uh, one of them was laying up there in an old shed, passed out drunk, and I guess they left him alone, but they took it. The other one had to serve time over that. He went to prison. Yeah. So that's just the, the, the way things happen. Um, and then uh, this one up the road here practiced to be a veterinarian. Somebody called him and wanted him to come to Polk County to doctor a cow, and he asked them if they had any moonshine over there that he knew they made good moonshine in Polk County and they said yeah we'll have you a pint when you get here. He got down there and he said where's that liquor and he handed it to him and he turned it up and drunk it. They thought he was going to doctor the cow with it and he said now where's that cow? <laughs> so uh, this other guy this other guy uh, they kept after him and kept after him tried to catch him but they never could catch him and they went in his house one night, and somebody tipped him off if they were coming, and he couldn't find any liquor. And, and uh, the reason they couldn't find it, he told them that his wife was real bad, sick in the bed, so he put the liquor in beside of her in the bed, and they left, and he got away with it. But he did have liquor there in the spigot in the kitchen. You know, he just run it out in the jar when somebody wanted something. But they finally did catch him years later, and he went to prison over that. That's a fail. Yeah. And this one down here, this happened down at Fruitland, and some of my kinfolk, all of them, I, I can't call no names, but this guy was, they, they knew he was making liquor, and this, this guy that stayed drunk all the time knew he was making liquor there, but he could, could never find it. He was going to get it. They stole from each other. And he saw him taking some post hole diggers in a shed there one evening. He said, you know, he, he's doing something with them. And he got out there looking around, and he could see where the leaves had been scratched around. He knocked them off there and he could see where he'd made a hole in the ground and dug down a little and found a jar. He reached and got it and it slipped out of his hand and hit another jar. I don't know how many he had in the hole, but he got all of it. So he oh. he found out how he was hiding his liquor from him. That's a tale. That is. That, and, is. Uh, that is. But uh, anyway, in this same particular one, one time stole a 30, 35 gallon barrel of liquor and carried it back across the field oh. from this same guy. So I don't know how he carried 35 gallons, but Wait. it might've been just half full or I don't know, might have drunk part of it and then carried the rest of it. I don't know. <laughs> but um, this uh, attorney in Hendersonville, 
It's not there anymore, but he did ask me if I could find some moonshine. I don't know why he picked me out. He probably thought I was out in where it grows out here, you know. He said, if you can bring me a gallon, put it right next to my Jeep, you know where I park it, and make sure you bring it in glass so we can drop it and get rid of the evidence if we have to. So I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, back when I was little, we went to Fruitland again. A lot of stuff went on down at Fruitland uh, to buy some pigs. My granddaddy had brought some and got down there and they were loose running up the mountain and <coughs> the lady that owned them, she said, just go see if you can catch them. And we went up there and ran up on a liquor still. And somebody went back down there and told her and she said, just, just pour it out down the hill that her husband's already in prison for bootlegging and got caught. So before they went back and turned it down the hill, the guy that was with us had already raked some of the leaves back and drunk some of the mash off of it. Yeah. And uh, I, maybe that's the way it was. And then when we turned it down the hill, there's a dead possum or a chicken one in the barrel right where he drank out of it. So it didn't bother him. Flavored it. Flavored it, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. These, these jars right here, this is, these two are number 13. Y'all familiar with the numbers on the bottom? Or, They're 13, they're real rare. I, I, I've got a 13 pint somewhere. But uh, the reason these are so rare, they, they put liquor in them years ago, that's what they used, but they were unlucky, the 13, so they busted them. So they're really hard to find now. So, and they're worth a lot of money. You got some 13s, so. And of course we got these uh, uh, Atlas and balls over here. And this is, a, this is what that stuff looks like. In the, this is water, by the way in a jar. So uh, this is a spider web bottle, old, really old and easy to carry in the pockets and that's what they had years ago. So they're hard to find, real rare. Out. These two guys stole the liquor still on Bearwall, up at the top of Bearwall Mountain where it goes to Poopers Creek and the top of the mountain and brought the steel down here and set it up on Clear Creek right up here to make their own liquor. They, they didn't make it to sell. They, they couldn't afford to buy it, so they stole the steel and made their own liquor. So uh, this guy, I can't say where he's from, but he went with his uh, father up to on Pisgah. They must have made a lot of liquor up there years ago, above Girton. And the worst whipping he ever got is his, his daddy was doing his business. He didn't know why he went, but there was a guy and this the little kid fell into a barrel of mice. He fell through some leaves and fell into a barrel of mice. It was the worst whipping he ever got. So this guy was on crutches years ago. He just had one, I think he had a wooden leg and he'd, he'd take bottles like this, moonshine and put them all in every pocket he had. And he'd go to Hendersonville and walk up and down the street and sell it to the doctors and lawyers on the street. And finally somebody turned him in and they caught him and he had to go to prison over that. This guy drunk some mice over in behind uh, the uh, Edneville Church over here, Mount Mariah, on that uh, Ball Rock Road years ago. And uh, it wasn't quite ready, it was green, and it messed him up, and he messed in his britches. And he, he took his pants off, turned them inside out, and washed them off in the creek. And it was 100 years ago or more, and to this day, that creek is Turnbridge's Creek. That's the name of it. And so there were some neighbors of mine. There were little people. They drank all the time. And it was told that one particular one of them could sit on a rotten apple and make him drunk. With the alcohol in it, it was that bad. So and down the road here, uh, people used to come up with trucks years ago and get apples. Everybody sold apples to trucks. This particular family would get the, the guy drunk that came to buy apples and, and uh, load his truck and send him back to South Carolina or wherever. And uh, one time they loaded his truck half full of pumpkins and finished loading with apples. And he come back in about a week and told him he wanted another load just like that. He made more off the of pumpkin than he did the apples. So that's what moonshine does. And uh, this particular place, the same place, it was the first place on St. Paul Road that sold apples and they'd tell the truck drivers that's coming for apples that the 
bridge washed out up the road, so they'd buy apples from them, and they'd all get another neighbor of mine um, drank moonshine or whatever he could get ever since he was big enough to drink something. And uh, drunk it all his life. You know it finally killed him? He was 102 years old. And this other guy made liquor up on uh, Hog Rock, and, and he wouldn't let anybody have a drink of it at all, nothing, till he got back to his house, and then he, he'd have it for sale for $2 a quart, $2 a quart, $4 a half gallon, and $8 a gallon. So he wouldn't let anybody have any of it. So these, uh, this boy and his dad were walking back over towards Hope County, up a little old trail, and all at once the woods just sound like a, dirt, a herd of deer had run. And uh, they seen the people running. And they said, what in the world? They knew what they were doing. So they went up there to their steel and looked around a little bit. And then didn't mess with nothing, just went on. And in a little while, they up the road, the four people come walking back down the road and asked them if they'd seen anything. No, we didn't see anything. <laughs> they, they sprayed they were at revenuers or something. There was a revenuer stopped over here at Edinville and had a little trainee with him. And this guy that he knew, he asked him if he could find some moonshine. He said, yeah, I think I can. It'll be about an hour before I can get some. So uh, he took off. I know where he went to get it years ago, you know. And uh, he picked up his buddy that took him with him. So they got back, and the revenue was still sitting there in that little trainee in there with him. And, and uh, the guy that he picked up to take with him seen him and scared him to death because he had that moonshine and here's the revenue. He turned white as a sheet. But anyway, when he handed the, the revenue the liquor, he took him a big old drink up and he said, he said, I can tell you right where this come from because of the taste of it. So that's the story. <laughs> well, years ago when people would come to the hotel on vacation, yeah. Every one of them wanted to take moonshine liquor back home. I didn't know where to find moonshine liquor, so I sent one of them up Bearwalla Mountain. I said, you might find some up there, I don't know. So he went up Bearwalla Mountain and he got stuck up there and they had to help him get out before he could come back down. Yeah. And from that day on, we called him Barrowalla Bill. <laughs> <laughs> but they do like to have moonshine. If, if people come to these cabins here now, and they'll want to know if some they can find something. But I just tell them it's in the stores now. I it mean, is. they sell it. Uh, it Junior Johnson's got a line of moonshine in every liquor store in the country now, and uh, it's the same stuff it, they made years ago. Well, so, I but it, they've got it for sale. It's, it's everywhere, but it seems like it. Uh, it tastes better if it's illegal. Some, something, something, I don't know what it is about it. Well, but. I think the mountains are known for moonshine liquor and revenuers. Yeah. Well, David, I certainly appreciate you taking time out Barbara's to up. talk to us about the liquor. I appreciate mountain. doing it. I don't know that much about it, but, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to, to do this and, and, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it out in the courthouse one of these days.